you doing well today I decided to share my typical morning routine in a minute you'll notice I'm wearing sunglasses and that is because literally I just came in from the school run I do my school run four times sometimes uh, mostly it's three times a week and generally when I come back I boil the kettle and make myself a nice refreshing cup of tea in the morning i always like my black tea with a lemon and then coffee usually happens later in the day either late morning or, or an early afternoon so besides the tea making i will be clearing out my desk and share the process with you which i hope will be somewhat inspiring to watch also right at the end I will be doing a botanical illustration, revisiting one of my sketchbooks and finishing a floral illustration that I did early in the month. There is also a tutorial that's still coming for that. Actually it's not early in the month, it's was it was in December, so last year. This is a little fruitcake that I made this weekend. On Saturday was a cooking day. I literally enjoyed it. It's such a therapy for me. So I will see you at my desk in my studio in a moment. Okay, so here we go. I didn't plan this whatsoever. It was one of those mornings that was super sunny, as you could see with the sunglasses. And um, it, um, it felt good to kind of do something. And my desk had been covered in this like paper I found for a while and Originally, I ordered a um, roll of paper, which is supposed to be like a wallpaper thing. Um, but I think this particular one is quite... It has a lot of fibers to it and, and a lot of things stick to it, even though it's not really like dirt, but it just gets dirtier quicker. This paper I figured out later was a paper that you put on the walls before you either paint them or before you put like um, actual wallpaper on them so if the walls are quite uneven that's the thing you stick on the walls so anyhow I have a whole roll of it but I didn't really like it I think this was the second time I'm changing it actually and like I said it just gets messy and dirty looking pretty quickly so underneath it as you can see I have another set of wallpaper and that's actually a, a, um, like a real wallpaper. So the plan here is to dust everything, clean everything. It's already almost end of January. Today is the 30th of January so I can't believe how quick the month has gone. The point of this clear out is to start fresh. As I have mentioned in my previous videos, I kind of lost some motivation and I lost interest almost in creating, which is so not me. And I'm trying to get back to it. And actually, I am in the process. I have started creating and it's been a slow start in January. But I completely forgot that I had my first positive covid test as in i had covid and i'm pretty sure i had covid before but this is the first time and i showed up as positive on the test um so the covid itself was pretty light i'd say there was one day which knocked me out completely but when i say it knocked me out i just pretty much slept through the entire day or half of it at least 
and I felt like taking things extra slow like I didn't feel like doing anything other than just cozying up uh, with a bit of blanket and relaxing which really was not that bad at all it's just like my body was telling me it's time to slow down which at that time I needed it anyway and it happened right before Christmas <laughs> so I had to do all of the like Christmas decorations and like the finishing touches right before Christmas all the food shopping uh, wearing my mask and I felt horrendous in the sense that my well physically wise I was fine actually but I felt horrendous that my nose was constantly running and it was like a nightmare you felt like sneezing and it's just like you know obviously wearing a mask you can't really properly breathe underneath but my husband at that time was sick as well so it was me feeling actually better with my COVID than he without a COVID and so I had to sort those groceries out of course being very sensible cleaning my hands and using the uh, sanitizer and everything like that so yeah I'm usually quite clean and um, super hygienic when it comes to these things because I don't like germs uh, so I don't uh, spread mine either and yeah I think the day before or evening before Christmas Eve I tested negative which I was so happy it was the best thing I could start um, you know hugging my son and kissing him I missed it so much and uh, finally stop wearing that mask in the house because I was trying not to pass it on to my husband and my son so yeah that was interesting but um, all in all I think somehow although it was a light version and I came off quite lightly I felt that weeks later I still would feel a little bit slow like it took me longer to do things maybe because I finally allowed my body to just relax and do nothing um, November has been pretty intense December has been too and so uh, really since September actually September October November December so it's been a full month that have been quite um, strenuous in many ways in terms of my projects and things and so it could be that once I finally relaxed over Christmas that I didn't feel like going back to it that's probably connected to then also taking a break from creating and losing that rhythm so I thought having a little fresh start by clearing out my desk and actually taking all these layers of paper and getting back to the original white mat that I have so this is like a soft uh, faux leather type of thing um, desk mat which I bought ages ago I really like it the only trouble was it would get dirty quite quickly and at the time when I was setting this um, desk up I think I was doing a lot of like different things sprays and just trying out different arts and craft supplies and it didn't work out for me at all I feel like these days I work a lot cleaner and if I am going to be working with acrylic paints or inks or splatters or something that would potentially make the mat dirty, I think I would just pull out uh, another like waterproof um, mat to, to lay on and work on. This is a little present I got for Christmas from the white company it's their diffuser it's super cute because it's tiny i like things to be tiny there is also a patented filter there that is supposed to um, somehow purify the air so i thought that's perfect for the studio and i like to infuse the studio very quickly with a nice aroma generally aromatherapy is something i really like here is a piece of art a little frame that i found in another part of the house that i thought is quite um, inspiring and i wanted to keep it in my studio so i found a new spot for it here is a quick overview of the desk it feels a lot 
cleaner and tidier it may not appear that way to you but for me this is quite um, organized and tidy and it's not much different I just opened up the area so the plan is now where you see the white mat for me it's going to be a rule not to put anything there other than like a water bottle or something for me the key is to leave that space open and not add anything there so i can easily create and not feel kind of um, pushed uh, for space so that is my desk and there are still a few things to be done a couple of things to be removed but this was like a quick clear out Mixing colors is another little exercise that I always recommend to get you started. You need to warm up like you do before exercising. Same thing when it comes to art. I find that the colors that you end up mixing in the beginning are always a little bit hit and miss. So it's best to do it in a separate sketchbook or on a separate piece of paper. And then once you're feeling fairly confident or once you're liking the color palette that you're going for or certain mixes that you have managed to create in this exercise, then you can take them to the actual uh, illustration. Let's talk about composition. So this is unfinished hydrangea and it was just an example of something i think i might have been trying out uh, granulating watercolors or playing uh, with a monochromatic color palette something along those lines so a finished botanical illustration wasn't in mind to begin with it was just like more of a um, painterly um, exercise but nothing is stopping you from going back to your sketchbooks and art journals and flipping through and finding some pages that might need some additional work to make it look more finished. So here essentially we have an image that was stamped with one of my um, first, I think this was a floral stamp set that you could build your own um, botanical clusters. It's been long sold out and I'm not planning to bring it back, but I am planning to design a new one. And so what I've done there is I've got a stamped image, watercolored it, and then I'm doing a bit of drawing on top. So I'm combining modern botanical illustration with a stamped image, which kind of has a cool look to it. Off camera, I also have um, added little black centers to the hydrangea florals, and that has lifted it because, as you can see, the stamped image has no hard outline, which I don't want to have in a stamped image. I can always um, go back and add some uh, lines with fine liner if I wanted to and in this case I wanted the flowers to not have any outlines just the centers and then have the leaves on each side connecting the whole composition so as you can see it's an elongated landscape composition that works really well with this format of a sketchbook depending on the sketchbook that you're working with um, you can change the orientation of the composition accordingly. I hope it makes sense. So here I am attempting to mix similar colors to what's already on the paper but I didn't want to just go for the exact same mixes. I could have looked at the footage of my um, recorded previous video but I just wanted to look at the colors that I already have out on my desk and basically use them in similar ways. So here I have pulled out chartreuse, I have pulled out the gold green deep and quinacridone gold deep from my ultimate color palette. It's available 
on Etsy, Aliona Creates. These are handmade watercolors. They're professional, they're artist grade, and I just used the little the little six half pan. There was a schminke one, but I, I didn't like the color there. So then I thought I'll stay true to my own watercolors and go into my handmade watercolors that I made myself. And uh, this set is the tropical palette, and the other one was, um, gosh, I can't quite remember now, the sunset palette, I think. So I was interested in reds, and both of those palettes had lovely reds. One is more of a coral, kind of super intense, beautiful, fiery red, and the other one is a, um, like a red, which is deep. So I then started mixing things and initially I wanted to add those reds into the green mixes to come up with this like um, forest green type of a color but somehow it always would still end up more orangey which I still like the color palette as you'll see but just playing around I realized later that there is actually the color that I'm looking for is right in front of me ready to use in the half pan in the tropical palette set. If any of you still have these palettes, if you haven't finished them yet, feel free to play along and um, mix new mixes, you know, new colors. The tropical palette is super granulating. It had the most interesting colors in there that I have ever created and that are available on the market. At one point I have contemplated creating a tube set of these colors because they were so gorgeous but I'm not sure this will be ever possible because having gone through the process of having my um, tubes made by someone else, by a manufacturer, I realize that it's quite a different process to when I'm sitting at my desk and I have all these pigments um, available to me and then I try a bit of this, a bit of that and somehow create this amazing like color mix. Now, if you try to give that recipe to someone else, chances are they won't be using the exact same pigments they, that you are using, which, you know, or will somehow end up different and also the technique the time of mulling things just everything and um, <laughs> there was one color that I actually was working on for this ultimate palette and we just couldn't get it to how I needed it to be after trying for so long it's like one color took us almost a month I, I realized it was impossible but had I made it in my own studio, I would have been able to make it. It's of course a stick of two ends because there's only so much I can make in my uh, studio um, at home. And um, I of course could... And I mean this was the reason why I wanted to find a manufacturer to have watercolors created for me as they have a professional setup and you know all the space to work with those pigments in larger quantities but I realized it's not exactly the same thing and especially how I make my watercolors is quite unique and unless I'm going to tell my technique uh, which you know potentially <laughs> um, wouldn't be good for my business so yeah um, I'm kind of missing making watercolors and I'm missing that particular set. When I when I worked with Tropical Palette, it reignited that watercolor making. And now that I have cleared out my desk and, you know, kind of made it all cleaner, I just don't want to work with pigments on my desk. And I think I will try to somehow get my hubby appreciated that I can maybe borrow his um, workshop desk in the garage and set it up just for the time being as I'm working on the uh, mulling which usually would be like a week or so 
and then I move to the next stage and I don't need to kind of um, to mull on the pigments anymore so yeah something I need to think about this year because there is just nothing that can compare to your own handmade watercolors um, in my opinion so here I have been playing around just adding a little touch of orange into the leaves just to break it up a little bit and make it less one-dimensional and there is quite a few green tones in the hydrangea flowers and petals as you can see and so if I just would have kept everything just green 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 <laughs> 50 shades of green I felt that it wasn't effective enough and to create a little bit more of a focal point I added that bit of orange which I really like and as you know my illustrations I do like to keep white of the paper a little bit of it at least I don't like to cover the entire areas especially in the botanical art I find that it creates a sense of um, I don't know like a contemporary style more than a traditional watercolor style and yeah just just having fun is what it is about and this particular technique is called wet into wet if you wish to know because the watercolors are still wet and I'm dubbing the orange into it which results in a soft flow of the colors blending rather than a hard edge so if I would apply this layer of paint onto already dried watercolor then it would look like a hard edge which I would need to soften with a brush which you'll see actually on this last leaf there that I've done um, there we go I'm just adding a little bit of water to soften it so you can still do it but it I find it less effective less dramatic than if you dab it into wet I hope you enjoyed this little journey and me taking you behind the scenes of how things are here and you have a lovely day leave a comment like the video hit the subscribe button do everything that i forgot to say right in the beginning of the video but you know how this thing works on youtube by now thank you so much for watching thank you for being here thank you for all of your support i wish you a fantastic rest of the day or evening and i will see you very soon with more watercolor content more botanical illustrations and all that good stuff once again thanks for watching and i'll see you soon